and go on without uh, without uh, going back and forth in the in this tab. Okay, so we have. Uh, if you can uh, write in the comment, I'll make sure that uh, I can go on. Okay, so my my dear team is saying me that uh, you can see me. Great. So that being said, let's go further. I will focus my screen on the presentation. And yep. So last uh, in the first episode, like in a Netflix, right? In the first episode, uh, that was previously. We were uh, first addressing the cobbler Ross grief cycle and the fact that you as an e-commerce manager or entrepreneur, you should take into account this, uh, this curve. You, in, in order to make a qualified decision and data-driven decision, you should avoid making the decision in the denial, anger, depression, or bargaining phase. So unless you haven't accepted that this is the new reality and these are the rules, you don't need to make, let's say, radical decisions. Then we've uh, addressed the fact that the big players are uh, making bold moves, right? Amazon is hiring 100,000 workers as coronavirus boosts, uh, is boosting e-commerce. And then we have looked at uh, where you are in the whole game and the fact that Amazon is playing offense because they have a financial strength, a very strong market positioning, and also they have uh, the financials to actually acquire more of the market. While you should be uh, first aware where you are in this uh, in this uh, two by two matrix. If you are having a strong market position but weak financial strength, you should fund the transformation, right? You should go uh, out there and, and uh, let's say invest in the processes and uh, in the areas which are stronger on you. If you don't have the financial resources nor uh, a strong market positioning, you should go big or go home. So either you do it big time, either you simply pivot because you sometimes you win, sometimes you learn, right? And then if we uh, go further on what we've learned last time, uh, I've uh, emphasized the importance of psychographic segmentation that is more important than ever because people are making all these crazy decisions around buying 200 rolls of toilet uh, paper and so on. So psychographic segmentation, that was where we, uh, we, we left somehow, right? And we understood that according to John Quelch from the Harvard Business School professor, we have four types of customers and four types of products. We have the slam on the brakes, which are going to look through the lens of making economies every, on every kind of decision. So any purchase will be according to what's the balance, what's the cost. Then we have the pain, but patient, the ones which will seek uh, to, to make economies, but will not be that, that effective. Then there are the comfortably, comfortably well off and the live for today. These are the two groups that will continue spending while the live for today are usually, uh, let's say younger and not so, uh, let's say, um, too preventive, right? So they are not too cautious or, uh, about the future. The comfortably well, well off will continue to purchase, but they will bargain uh, much more uh, when they are making buying decisions. And uh, in this episode, I will address how to tailor your tactics according to what you are. That being said, I think what I should do, I should change this. Yes, you can download the slides after. Uh, just a second to make sure I'm uh, also sharing the the right tab because I've uh, I've prepared a big strategy. So the uh, in, during this time is to obtain internal alignment. So the first and the the most important asset that the best asset that you have are your colleagues, your uh, employees, right? If you are an e-commerce owner or manager, you should inform them wh about what's going on. If, it, if the things are looking bad and you still don't know how this will affect them and your company as well, let your colleagues know that you don't know because in this manner, they will share the, the, the pressure and they, they, they will understand that they need to, to team up with you. 
And that means you are a leader. So a leader is not like having a crystal ball and he knows every time where to cut through the jungle. A leader is a, a, a someone that if he is uncertain, he will find clarity during uncertain times. And they need they as an empl as employees, they need that kind of certainty, and they they need the clarity, and they need to feel that someone is working to ma make their life easier and safer. If things are looking good, you will need to, to get them motivated. So you should readjust their recognition and their reward plan because in this time, you need to make them autonomous and much more, much more motivated so that they can make their own decisions while you are working uh, remote. Going further in the next step, so let's say you've managed to do this, in the next step, you need to become data-driven. So this is the research time. You need to do two kind, two types of research the product demand research and the customer behavior research. And I'm going to go first on the product demand uh, side. First, the, the free sources that you have are the internal search from your uh, own website, the Google Trends and the Google Search Console. There, you should understand if the demand for your product is higher or lower comparing to February or January, depending when the, this uh, coronavirus uh, started in your country. Demand is the key here. So if there's no demand for what you're selling, you might have to readjust things, right? So let's see on which, depending on which category you are, I'm gonna uh, analyze all of them, but bear with me for the A. So when the demand is way higher for all the products, then your top priorities will be first, the supply, second, the fulfillment, for the customer experience and fourth, the demand generation, because that means you have enough demand and you don't need to focus too much on the, on the demand side. In order to positively uh, craft the customer experience, I recommend you to use this blueprint over here. Of course, I'm gonna share this uh, PDF with you and the other one as, as well. So in order to use this blueprint to monitor the NPS uh, for e-commerce, I'm not gonna go in too much details over there, but you have this, uh, this uh, methodology and blueprint in order to, to uh, craft uh, a working way to address customer experience, because that is a, a neglected aspect on too many companies. While customers are one of the, your most important assets, not too many companies are monitoring things like net promoter score, return rate, the most, most uh, toxic uh, products and so on and brands, right? Let's go further. So let's suppose that you are in B, right? For some products, the demand is higher. For some products, the demand is lower. So if you are here, then you should go directly to group your products. Yeah, but if grouping your products according to being essential, streets, postponables, and expect expendables, it's a, it's a joint uh, step for number uh, for C type of uh, e-commerce companies as well. So where the demand is way lower than before, what you should do about it is to go to step three as well. So the step number three is to group your products. What does it mean to group your products? Th this means you should group them according to these four categories. Yeah, Essentials that are necessary for survival or perceived as central for uh, to well-being, right? And this is uh, food, uh, hygiene stuff, energy supply, internet, all kinds of services which are necessary for survival during this period. According to the type of customers that we are uh, that are looking at this type of products, the, the essential definition might, dif might be different. And I'm gonna talk a bit about this uh, a bit later. So the second group of, uh, of products are the treats. Uh, the treats are indulgences whose immediate purchase is considered justifiable by some of the segments, by some of the psychographic segments that we're going to talk a bit later about. Then the postponables. The postponables are needed or desired items whose purchase can be reasonably put off, right? So, or something like a new bike, a new car, uh, I don't know, a new office desk, whatever. And then the expendables. So what you need to do is to see 
which of the products that I'm selling as an e-commerce are considered essentials, which are postponables, which are treats and which are expendables. What was the percentage of expendables from my total product uh, assortment? After you group your products, we, we might go to, to the next step, which is the step number four. But because, before going there, let's look at the most affected and the most vulnerable uh, of the e-commerce companies. The ones which, in terms of demand, they are almost zero, right? So what you need to, to understand is that the e-commerce is mirroring the current market demand, but is a bit privileged because you can do delivery right so you are not shut down completely so you need to understand that if there's no demand for your current products you still have some options and let's look at the options that i've identified i'm not claiming that these are all the tactics that you could apply if you have a zero demand but this might uh, help you out so the tactic number one would be to do more advertising the pros would be that this is going to help the cash flow a bit so let's let, let's presume that you are selling, uh, I don't know, clothes or uh, whatever for uh, for going out or outdoor, right? Or, uh, uh, I don't know, tents or something which is not usable right now. The pros would be that maybe with uh, a push on advertising, you could help the cash flow a little bit. But you need to also take into account your economics, right? Because this kind of tactics are not coming out of the blue. This might be, uh, th this need to be merged with the economic situation of your e-commerce, right? So the cons for this more advertising strategy would be that depending on what you're selling, the customers could perceive your company as being insensitive, right? Because if someone are, is on that, that curve, is in the panic, right, is in the depression mode, they are not interested or, on anything that it's bugging them, that is make, making them feel surreal because th their definition about reality and their perceived reality is that it's unstable, it's uh, hostile, and they don't trust that this is going to be fixed in a snapshot. So that means you should reconsider all your advertising messages not to be uh, perceived that as insensitive and before doubling down on advertising even though the the supply is so much because all the people are staying on the news on facebook on all these uh, media outlets another uh, con would be that this might not work and you would burn the precious cash that you have which during these days is like oxygen right so these days you should take care about all the financials that you have, the, 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 the money that you have in the bank, right? Going further, the, the, the second tactic, if you have zero supply, would be to apply massive discounts. You could do this in, all, in order to help the cash flow a bit, but not the margin, right? Because if you apply discounts, that means your, your margin would be, le would be less. And that means that depending on what you're selling, you will lose in the perceived value after this downturn, right? In the recovery period, the customers will remember that you would be, you, you, you sold this, I don't know, watch uh, but with the 70% discount. So that means you are being perceived much more cheaper than you previously were. Another uh, counter... Uh, effect would be that this low margin will go will will be meaning low budget as well to acquire new stock and generate new demand and that means in in, in you might be considering before applying massive discounts what you can do though would be to a b test the tactic number one and tactic number two as well so that you can identify if i am investing 200 dollars 500 1,000, whatever, depending on where you are. If I am pushing this kind of discounts, what's going to happen? If I'm pushing this kind of messages, what's going to happen in terms of the ROI and the balance between the investment and the, re the return? So the next tactic would be to bet on the products with the highest demand. And that means you should analyze your products you have zero demand but you still have people which are going down the funnel with some products you have 
product view rate to help you out and you have the add to cart rate to help you out. So you can see which are the products which are being the most visited during this uh, period, which are the products which are being added to cart even though the conversions, the, the, the purchase is not happening and which are the most wish listed uh, products which can also be a tactic another tactic would be here to take a look at the products which have been previously added to wish list talk with your product managers and understand what's your supply and understand if you can push this kind of products to the customers that previously added those uh, those items into their wish list this is also helping the cash flow this is also let's say positioning you as being a bit insensitive depending on what you're selling and your your uh, your brand will will lose as well in uh, in in the perceived uh, value if you are also doing discounts right the, the next tactic would be to research and sell new products that are in high demand right now a tactic that I can, um, I've identified yesterday when, while I was doing a course of on e-commerce with, uh, uh, with, with one, of, one of the e-commerce managers there, they were selling luxury products and uh, gourmet stuff, a very expensive thing, which can be sold to the comfortably well off, right? The ones with the highest purchasing power. And the, the trick for them was to team up with someone that already has the community, with the spa centers, with the, anyone which is selling high-end services that they can't sell anymore to their audience. So by teaming up with them, they could get a new audience, come and buy their expensive products, they could share the profits, and they, they could invest zero into advertising to address this kind of... Uh, Customer, so that might be an idea for you, depending on what you're selling. But we're gonna have a Q and A session at the end, and we can uh, talk about it uh, a bit later. So another route, if you're not going to team up and uh, sell new products, uh, the, the same products to new audiences that you can acquire by this kind of partnerships, might be to scan the market and identify the new products that are in high demand right now. So uh, what I suggest you over there is to do this research with Google Trends and also with Exploding Topics. Uh, it's, uh, it's a website I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add it to the slides and I'm going to share this with you as well. So the pros here would be that this can become the main revenue source, right? During this period, this move can also save the company depending on how fast you are moving. The cons would be that you have to rely on new suppliers that you have, don't have a relation with them and that might be very strict in terms of payment uh, terms. And also, it's a bit of repositioning and branding game. So if you are selling, until now you were selling, uh, I don't know, chairs and furniture, if you are going to sell, uh, I don't know, all kinds of stuff which are not related to that, let's say laptops and whatever, that means you have a rep repositioning game. But you can also create a new brand right? Or you can create a new subdomain so that you are not affecting the existing domain. The next step would be, uh, the, another tactic would be to consider selling vouchers to your most loyal customers for the moment when the lockdown is going to be out. So the pros would be that this can help the revenue and the cash flow. Yeah, because you, you are not going to run out of stock by selling vouchers. These are only digital vouchers and you don't have to mess with the fulfillment. And this is very easy to execute. The cons, I couldn't find any con right now, but uh, you're, uh, I'm open to, to, to hear if you can find it. So going further, uh, but before going further, let me see if uh, there are any questions on the chat. Okay, so... Oh, I, I haven't uh, focused the screen on uh, the slideshow. Yeah. So the thing is that I think that online advertising is that not bad when it helps people finding what they are looking for. I mean, we're still running our Google ad campaigns. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I'm not saying that advertising is bad. I'm saying that you might offend some people if you are selling something which is nice to have right something expendable so for people that are have just lost their job 
and that are threatened because they don't, don't have the, uh, the, let's say, the basic needs covered, you might offend them if you pretend that nothing has happened. Okay. Uh, yes, Maurice. Yes, Juliana. I've just, uh, I've just, uh, okay. I've just uh, made the, the slides bigger. Could be that you'll be more cash crunched to fulfill that item later when or when we are in the recovery period. Yes, Kristalin, that's right. But still, you will have cash to, to get to that period better. And of course, you should be uh, uh, taking care about your financial game very, very well. Yes, Panos, love RFM. Okay, we can go to the, to the next chapter. Sorry about uh, not having my uh, my screen bigger so these are the the tactics more advertising apply massive discounts bet on products with the highest demand research and sell new products that are in demand right now and consider selling vouchers yeah these were the five ta tactics i am sure that there are plenty of more to to apply okay going further in terms of researching the customer behavior on e-commerce, uh, I'm a big, big proponent of RFM, which stands for recency, frequency, and the monetary value. So that means you should segment your customers according to their RFM scores. In the first episode, we had a bit of chat about it, right? So the RFM groups, according to their recency, frequency, and monetary value, could be transformed into X lovers, yeah, 155. I'm going to show you a bit in our own, uh, own product. True lovers, lovers, about to dump you, don't want some new customers. Let me change the screen a bit. Yep. And let me go directly to a new tab. All good so far? Can you see me? Hear me? I'm stalling here so that I can change the, the tab. Okay. Right. So here we are. We, we could go to understand a bit about the RFM. We should go here in, uh, we should understand how this is working by uh, by looking at the, the RFM points. So RFM means recency, frequency, and monetary value. These are the segments, right? If a customer has bought within the last 29 days, that means he has the highest score and recency. If he has bought between 30 and 89 days, that means he has four and so on. So the lowest score could be if he placed the last order, 240 days or in the more than one year ago, right? In terms of frequency, we have, uh, I don't know, the best pro customers would be the ones that place more than 10 orders, right? And then the fourth, the, the, the score number four is for the ones that place between four and nine, three for three, two, one, and so on. And in terms of monetary value, you have these segments, right? If they place uh, uh, orders of a total than more than 920 euro or uh, US dollars or whatever currency, that means they have the highest score. So the best customers would be the ones that have five here, five here, and five here. And then you could also analyze and see how many of them uh, you have. So after you make this distribution and un understand the distribution of your customers in terms of RFM, what you might want to do would be to simply go just a second to simply go to to score to map the scores right and to obtain this kind of soulmates lovers and so on so let's take a look a bit at the soulmates let's say these are having five on recency five on frequency and four on monetary value or five 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 so here you could see that you have 1,000 customers that placed 21,000 orders 13 million euro and uh, the average order value was 600 euro and you have uh, 10,000 euro per customer. So that means these are your most precious customers, right? 1,250. These are the best customers that you have. And then you have all sorts of customers, the flirting ones, the new customers, the potential lovers, the about to dump you and so on. So you might want to also play, play a bit with them. 
But what is really important in this type of analysis is to understand where is the margin coming from? So who's the, who's the group of customers which is the most impactful in terms of, uh, of margin? So in order to do this, you might take a look over here, right? You have the breakups and here you have the share of revenue, the share of margin and the share of customers. So uh, the beauty of this model is that it's showing you data about your real customers, while Google Analytics is showing you data about your visitors, which are unknown strangers, this model shows you data around real customers. So the breakup would be like this. So you have 2% of the margin coming from 15% of your customers or the about to dump you group, 31% of your customers that have generated 18% of your margin. But you also have the lovers, right? 6% of your customers that generated 30% of your total margin. So that's why you need to do a deep diving into them and to understand which are these customers. So which are them in terms of how, which are the characteristics, the common things, the patterns between the true lovers. And another important thing would be here that once you have the true lovers, so once you identify them, you might want to do further research on them. So going further, I'm going to uh, switch on the, oh, I've made the same mistake, right? I couldn't close my camera. Yeah, I'm gonna close my camera. You're right. You're right, Maurice. You're right, Navit. You're right, Angel. You're right. <laughs> yes. Okay, so what I was showing you in order not to be so blurry, I was showing you that 6% of your customers could generate 30% of the total margin right so these are your most important customers and you will need to understand who are these customers from which city what is their age group what is their reason what motivates them to come over and over and over again on your website and buy again from you because retention rate is the most important aspect once you've solved the acquisition phase right so going going further I'm going to close this uh, message and go further with the strategy. Yeah. Do you have questions over here? Anyone? Navid? No. Okay. I'm closing this message. Okay. Let me close this and then let me share another screen with you. So let's focus on this tab. Yeah. Okay, and now I'm not gonna forget. I'm gonna close this tab, yep. I'm gonna focus the screen over here. Okay, perfect. So once you've identified your RFM groups, what you need to take into account right now, going further, this is the psychographic segmentation, right? So let me show you the big picture. After you've grouped your products into essentials, treats, postponables, and expendables over here, if you've got a higher demand or if you have a so-and-so so -so demand or if you have a lower demand than before, you have to group your products into these kind of groups, right? How do you do this? You simply go into your database or you download all the product list and you simply check them as essential treats, postponables or expendables. You tag them. Then you do the psychographic segmentations, right? So what does it mean psychographic segmentation? You need answers to these three questions. What is the distribution of your current customer base? And I've said earlier that we have the slam on the brakes, the pain but patient, the comfortably well off, and the live for today, right? So these are the four major groups in terms of psychographic segmentation. And that means the slam on the brakes are the ones which are not going to buy anything which is not essentials, essential, right? So these are going to disregard anything which is not uh, essential. The pain but patient will be much more considerate be, be, before buying, but you need to, to see the distribution. So for my current e-commerce, I have Slam on the brakes, 20%, pain but patient, 15%, uh, comfortably well off, 45% and so on. So the comfortably well off are the ones which usually have a higher purchasing power. These are the guys that could 
continue buying like nothing has uh, happened before, right? And the leaf for today are the ones which are uh, buying like nothing has happened, but they don't have, let's say, the financial security and stability to, to, to go further. How are you asking these things? So what is the distribution of your current customer base? You are asking these things and you are mixing these things with the RFM, right? So you look at the 555, the true lovers that you have, and then you also ask them questions, right? So once you have the distribution from all the RFM groups, you might want to ask them, what are the chances to buy things from this category, from that category, and from the other category? So in this manner, you'll be able to understand how many of your customers have migrated to slam on the brakes, because this is the most, uh, let's say, uh, painful behavior for uh, for any e-commerce, which is not selling essential goods, right? Then how are they considering your products, your own products? So first you ask them about various types of products so that you understand their own uh, psychographic uh, segment. And then you ask them about your own products, right? You group your products into XYZ, 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 and you, you ask them to label them. How would you consider uh, this product and this product and this category of products? And in this manner, you will be able to understand how this is affecting your own product categories, right? And third, but not the least, is what is their purchase intention for your current products, right? This is not something that you might rely 100% on, but it's something that you want to be informed about. So understanding the purchase intention will allow you to go further and understand where the market is going. Even though the market is not yet settled, because there are people which are still believing that this is going to end next week or in three weeks, the market is somehow accepting the new reality. We are staying in home, the economy will slow down, the economy will slow down, and we might need to change our uh, purchase behavior, right? And then what you need to do, <coughs> sorry, after all this, uh, all this research, you might want to craft your new strategy by being data driven. So now that you have all this information, you might want to go further and craft your new strategy. But this is something for the, the next episode. So that being said, I'm going to close this, um, this message and I'm going to share the other uh, screen with you. Okay, come on, tab. Yep. Okay, let me know if you can see the screen. Cliffhanger. <laughs> yeah, so um, let me see. So these are the RFM groups. I've talked about it, how to craft the e-commerce strategy. Don't we don't know where we are. That's the problem with the current strategy. In the last episode, we've talked about the fact that you might go to prevention if you have zero demand, right? Cost cutting, promotion, if you have some demand. Pragmatic, you, you sit and wait, yeah? And progressive, you are agile and you do this uh, data-driven approach. So this approach that I've uh, recently shown you is for the progressive, uh, progressive companies. So I have two more things to inform you. First is that you should go to this link in order to use our, our technology, right? So we are doing this for any e-commerce which has less than 100 employees, yeah? We have 5 million euro, it's not going to be 5 million left. In the meantime, we, give, uh, we have give, given away around 400K worth of our technology. Go to this link and benefit or inform someone that you know, a friend, or if you're an agency, make sure you can help your customers by making use of our, our technology. These are the resources that you might uh, be uh, using. I'm going to send you uh, all the slides in, uh, in a follow-up follow email. And if you have any type of uh, questions, I'm all yours. So let's see if you, if you have questions. 
Yes, Tudor, I need a technology assistant. I have one, but this technology that we are using is not easy to use with two free people. Even though my team is here, they can't help me out to, to mix with, uh, with all these uh, slides. You're welcome, Carmen. You have to screen reverse. Yes, yes, you're right. <laughs> you're right. Okay, so what I was just telling you was that we have this offer, you, this approach, this strategy that I've emphasized you was for the progressive companies, the companies which are having the, the right balance between prevention and promotion by being data driven and, and evaluating every aspect of their business. These are the resources. I'm going to make sure you will get them. And if you have questions, now is the time to ask them. Okay, so if you have any kind of questions, I'm going to stick around for a few more minutes. Otherwise, we can see each other in the next episode. Okay, you're welcome, Navid. You're welcome, Sean. Okay, so I'm going to count to, yeah. Okay, so I have a question. What is Renato? New to this, what is the cost and time of implementation for revenue tool? There is no cost associated. You should just implement it with your own developers, right? For the retention tool, we are giving away it for uh, for free. If you're on Shopify, there is even an extension. You simply go out there and you implement it. You go to uh, the customer uh, customer retention tab in uh, apps.shopify.com. Yes, we are doing B2B segmentation as well. So the, the Omniconvert Reveal tool can be used for B2B as well, not only for B2C. You, you could do exactly the same. And we have one of our first customers where using uh, office, uh, where uh, is selling office supplies and they've used this in order to alert all their staff around uh, VIP customers which are placing orders because they are be, they they were uh, they weren't enough proactive. Uh, they uh, they've realized that they could trigger an alert on the order management system by using our technology. That there's a there's a new order from a VIP customer, and moreover they would be able they they are now able to monitor NPS for their VIP customers. The current customers are the most. Uh, important ones. Uh, we have a new question from Shay Jafar. Does your tool support WooCommerce? Yes, it supports WooCommerce as well, but we don't have an extension for that. In order to use it on WooCommerce, you need to implement it. Okay. Will you do a webinar uh, on the B2B similar to today? Yes, I, uh, I can do that, Andy. of course. I haven't considered that, but uh, yeah. Do you think COVID-19 will have a long-term impact on the purchase behavior of customers with more preference for e-commerce than in-store purchases? Yeah, by by all means, that's for sure. I mean, even even my my mother-in-law is considering to buy from e-commerce, and she hasn't used e-commerce before, even though she knew me, and I'm in the e-commerce game since I don't know, 2006. Okay, how many customer data points you need for this tool to work? You need the uh, orders, customers, um, you need four streams of data, orders, customers, products, and, and uh, categories. That's for Navid. Okay, any other questions? Tick tock, tick tock, time is ticking. Okay, so I think that's a wrap for today, I'm going to close this message with the questions yeah this time i know for sure how where to click thanks a lot everyone for uh, for being part of this make sure you stay healthy make sure you help your neighbors your colleagues your uh, loved ones uh, keep up the good work put a smile on your face and cheer up we're gonna get through this as well together see you in the next episode and all the best I have a new question, but I'm going to answer you uh, on the chat. Okay, guys. Bye.